The Symbolism of the Magpie Magpies are birds of the Corvidae family, a family which includes rooks, crows, ravens, jackdaws, jays, magpies and chuffs, but excludes the so-called Australian magpie because it is a different species, Gymnorina tibisan. Corvids display remarkable intelligence for animals of their size. They have tool-making and using ability, for example, which was thought to be possessed only by a few higher mammals, as Aesop in his fable of the crow and pitcher knew. Magpies of the genus Pica are generally found in temperate regions of Europe, Asia and North America, with populations also present in Tibet and high elevation areas of Kashmir. The magpie was originally called Maggi Pie or Mag Pie and the term Mag is a root word from which derives skilled magicians, astrologers, where Magi is the plural of Magus, magician, learned magician. There is some conjecture that the nursery rhyme four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie actually refers to the magpie, given the use of the symbols song, king, pie and sixpence, all explained on our website, this hypothesis is not a frivolous one. The pie in this context is a collection of twenty-four divisions of the cosmic egg based on constellations. See our video on constellations and thus a measure of time. Why 24? Time was originally measured using decans which first appeared in the 10th dynasty 2100 BCE on coffin lids in ancient Egypt. The sequence of these star patterns began with Sothis, Sirius, and each decan contained a set of stars and corresponding divinities. As measures of time, the rising and setting of decans marked hours, but the hours were not of fixed length. Both the Egyptians and Babylonians used duodecimal, which is base 12, and sexagesimal, base 60, numeral systems. Hipparchus, the Greek astronomer, geographer and mathematician, then gave us the equinoctial hours by proposing the division of a day into 24 equal hours. Thus the way we measure time was decided by the constellations, a base 12 numbering system, and Hipparchus. And from there we have the clock and the symbolism based on it. But Hipparchus could not have achieved what he did without the aid of Babylonian astronomy, of which he displayed a knowledge far deeper than any Greek before or after him. So now we can hypothesize that symbolically, a mag pie is a collection of a very accomplished magician astrologers found within the cosmic egg. The rulers of the constellations that were used in defining time. Each one is both black and white, someone able to deal with both the black side of magic but also white. The rich blue colour indicates very advanced spirituality. Blue is the colour of spirit. So when the term ruler is used to describe these constellations, it was meant literally, 
These men were godlike rulers in their wisdom and knowledge. The Remnants of the System Magpie Symbolism In the UK at least, and certainly in the area from which I came, the magpie commanded a great deal of respect. My grandfather used to ride horses, and during any outing in the country, it was traditional to doff your riding hat to a magpie as a sign of respect. They were in some senses both feared and admired. There was also a rhyme I knew as a child which links them with the ability to prophesy. Much as the Magi in the Bible prophesied Jesus' birth. One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told, eight for a wish, nine for a kiss, ten for a bird you must not miss. When I broke my Achilles tendon by falling down some steps in a garden, as I lay there in some pain, a single magpie laughed. <laughs> and if you have never heard a magpie laugh, you are lucky. It is the eeriest and most spine-chilling laugh you can imagine, like a rather disdainful human laugh. The Magpie as Magician A very accomplished magician can shapeshift, change his shape to appear to be something else, and the Magpie was a bird chosen by very accomplished shapeshifters. Whereas Odin had crows who acted as his messengers, the really powerful shamans became magpies and flew where they wished to go themselves. The magpie's tail resembles an arrow, a symbol of both very fast flight and advanced spiritual experience, such as prophecy. Winston Churchill, the magpie. Among the Romans, not a bird without a prophecy was heard. Fortunes of empire often hung on the magician's magpie's tongue, and every crow was to the state a sure interpreter of fate. Overall, any magician who used the magpie as his emblem was both a black and white shaman, capable of shape-shifting or going out of body, a healer and a prophet, a very powerful person. Magpies have a reputation for attacking smaller, weaker birds, and in days gone by, the shaman's death prayer was all too real. If you doubt the existence of death prayers, read the observations on death prayers on our website. So given what they represent, and the powers they display, people had every right to fear and respect magpies. The Thieving Magpie Deval FBM 2008 The Thief in the Mirror The Eurasian magpie, Pika Pika, has a poor reputation as a child, I learned never to leave small, shiny objects, such as teaspoons, unattended outdoors, as these raucous birds will steal anything they can put their beaks on. This folklore even inspired a Rossini opera, La Gaza Ladra, The Thieving Magpie. Nowadays, this view has been replaced with one that is more sensitive to ecological balance in which magpies are depicted as murderous plunderers of the nests of innocent songbirds. Either way, 
they are black and white gangsters. Despite the jokes, this paper rather indicates there is truth in the belief they like and steal shiny objects. An article in Science News reporting the results of a study where magpies had apparently shown no interest in shiny objects upon closer examination indicated nothing of the kind. New study takes the shine off magpie folklore. Science News 2014, University of Exeter. Two loose piles of food, nuts, were placed on the ground with two piles of objects, shiny and non-shiny. Each placed 30 centimetres from a nut pile. Magpies only made contact with a shiny object twice in 64 tests. Both times, a silver ring was picked up and immediately discarded. So, magpies preferred food to shiny objects. Um, was this even worth reporting? Given the choice between a fillet steak and a piece of aluminium foil, the shiny object, which would you go for? All this simply adds to the symbolic mystique, as jewels are symbolically spiritual truths, small gems of spiritual wisdom. They are a subset of the overall symbolism of treasure. So it is hardly a surprise if the most powerful magicians of all like amassing spiritual wisdom. Sing the song of sing, the pot is full of rhyme. A final poem. Constance Oliver. Magpies in Picardy. The magpies in Picardy are more than I can tell. They flicker down the dusty roads and cast a magic spell on the men who march through Picardy, through Picardy, to hell. The blackbird flies with panic, the swallow goes like light, the finches move like ladies, the owl floats by at night. But the great and flashing magpie, he flies as artists might. A magpie in Picardy told me secret things of the music in white feathers and the sunlight that sings and dances in deep shadows he told me with his wings. The hawk is cruel and rigid he watches from a height the rook is slow and sombre the robin loves to fight but the great and flashing magpie he flies as lovers might. He told me that in Picardy, an age ago or more, when all his fathers were still eggs, those dusty highways bore, brown singing soldiers marching out through Picardy to war. One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl and four for a boy. Five for silver, six for gold Seven for a secret never to be told Eight for a wish, nine 